Hey, good morning, Pastor Joe from Community Alliance Church. This past Sunday morning during our sermon time, I mentioned that we would be releasing this video to include some things that we didn't have time to talk about on Sunday morning when it comes to our statement that Jesus has all authority. I wanted to give you some more of the scripture and the theology behind his statement. Now, if you remember this past week, we were talking about Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, where Jesus comes before his disciples and says, all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. And we remember that the word behind authority is the Greek word exousia, which most of the time in the New Testament is translated as authority. But it also has some other translations which helped us to work out a good definition that we are going to use when we look at Jesus' authority. First, it can be translated as right. Right, which is really the, the proper role or the proper position to do something. Or power, which is we call might. So we can say that Jesus has all authority because he has all the right and all the might within our world. And when we look at leaders, some leaders have right without might, and some have might without right. Let me give you an example. For someone who might have might without right, the ability to do something without the actual right to do it, would be if you woke up in the morning and you went down to your kitchen and you noticed that your house had been robbed over the night. Someone with might or power broke into your house, stole some of your things, but they didn't have a right to do it. Other times people have a right, but they really don't have the might. They don't have the power. For instance, if you go to McDonald's today and you're going through the drive-thru and you decide you want a Big Mac meal and you look around and you say, it's not very busy here. I'm going to try to negotiate the price of my Big Mac meal. And you pull up to the window and you tell the person bringing up your order, look, I know you're not that busy. You're probably hurting for some sales. Instead of $8 for a Big Mac meal, how about if I give you 6 they're not going to be able to have the power to change the price. You're either going to pay the price or you're not going to get the meal because they have a right to sell it to you, but they don't have any power to do anything about it. And when we look at Jesus' authority, he has all right and all might within our world. Now, one of the passages in Scripture that really spells this out well comes from Colossians chapter 1. In that passage, Paul writes this. He says about Jesus, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. In other words, Jesus was the creator behind the world that we live in. Just like parents, if you create children, you have the right and the authority over them. Because Jesus created the world, he has the right and the authority over the world. But it goes beyond that. He's not just a creator that makes the world and, and then brushes his hands and says he's done with it. He's a creator that has a purpose and a design for the roles that take place within the world. Corinthians, or Colossians 1.16 says, Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. That means that every PTO president, every CEO of a company, every small business owner, every uh, home uh, improvement store manager, every position, every head of state, every head of maintenance, your role has been given to you ultimately through the authority of Jesus Christ. It comes through him. But ultimately also it means that the authority that he has given to you, you're to use that authority for his purposes. All authority has been created through him and for him. Paul continues on and he says, Jesus is before all things and in him all things hold together. In other words, Jesus didn't create the world and then take his hands off. He actually maintains the world that we live in. If Jesus retires, we expire. It no longer ceases to be. Paul continues on talking about Jesus' authority and says, he is the head of his body, the church. He is the source of the body's life. Many different churches in many different towns have different organizational structures, different systems of authority, but Jesus Christ is ultimately the head of the church. So if you're a member of a church, if you're a part of a church, Jesus has the ultimate authority over that body within the world and within the church in which you serve and you worship. Finally, Paul writes that Jesus is the firstborn son who was raised from death in order that he alone might have the first place in all things. So he kind of just takes, he says, if you can think of it, Jesus has first place in it. He is the number one authority in every area of our lives. Paul works really hard in this passage to leave no page unturned, no area of our lives without the light of the authority of Jesus Christ shining into it. Now, in your life, did you know that there are different types of authority? So when Paul says first place, he has first place in a number of different ways that authority exists within our world. Let me give you a couple of them. First, there's the authority. There's the authority type that's kind of based on where you sit. We could call this positional authority. It's based on where you sit. 
This would be the head of a company, possibly a principal of a school. It could even be a parent within a home. It's a position of authority. Then there's a type of authority that's based on really what you can do. It's an authority of power. It's a, a, of capability. It's, it's of, I can do this. I have the power to do it. Therefore, I wield some authority over it. Then there's an authority based on what you know, based on knowledge or experience. For instance, if you're trying to get into weightlifting, you might hire a personal trainer because they know what they are doing. They have experience of doing it, and they have knowledge of how the body works and how the body responds to weights. So they have an authority to teach you how to do that. And then finally, there's an authority based on care, based on someone's concern for you. If you think of it in your life, there's probably at least someone in your life that maybe they don't sit in a position of authority over you. Maybe they're not a powerful person, maybe not physically strong. Maybe they don't wield a lot of influence over people in what they do for a living. Maybe they don't even know a whole lot about different fields that aren't experts, but because they care so much about you, they wield authority in your life. When they speak into your life, it carries weight because you know that they truly care about you. Maybe it's an uncle. Maybe it's a grandparent. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a neighbor. The fact that they care about you, that they love you, wields a tremendous authority. And when we look at these areas of authority, the different ways it plays out in our lives, what we see from Scripture is that Jesus is actually first place, just as Paul said in Colossians. He's the first place in all these areas of authority. For instance... We see in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul writes this. He says, That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above. All rule and all authority, power, dominion. In other words, we learn that when Christ raised from the dead and ascended to heaven, God actually seated him at his right hand, a position of authority. Whenever Stephen was being martyred in, in Acts chapter 8 and he looked to heaven, he saw Christ seated at the right hand of God. Christ holds the ultimate authority because he sits at the right hand of God, a position of no higher authority in the universe. But not only does Christ sit in the highest place of authority in our universe, he has the greatest power within our universe. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 24, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. Jesus is working his kingdom purposes out in this world and all power and authority and dominion that doesn't submit to him will be destroyed and done away with. And then actually Jesus has power over the most powerful thing that any of us face in our lives, which is death. No matter how much power we wield, no, much how, no matter how much knowledge or success we carry within this world, every human being is destined to death. It is the worst thing that can happen to us, and it is the one thing that is guaranteed to happen to all of us. It might be the greatest power that we fear, and it certainly is one of the greatest powers that we face. And Paul continues on, he says, Jesus will reign until he has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Jesus is more powerful than the most powerful thing that we face, which is death. Jesus has all power within this world. He also has all power within your life and within my life. Because he wields this power, we can turn to him and ask for his influence upon us and upon the world in which we live. And that's something that we do that we call prayer. Now, not only does Jesus have the right because where he sits and the power because of what he can do, we see that Jesus also just has an authority about him because of what he knows. When he was teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verses, chapter 5 through chapter 7, Jesus gets done, and when Jesus had finished saying these things, crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. See, Jesus knew the laws of God in a way that people had never heard it explained before by their teachers. Well, how did he know this? Well, one, because he was God. He had intimate knowledge of the things of the universe because he was God himself. But it's not just because he was God. He was able to teach with authority because he knows us intimately. He knows you intimately. He knows me intimately. There is no greater authority on you and me than Jesus Christ. He knows more about you and I than any other person in the world. And that's why his teachings have authority because he takes the truth of God and the truth of us and brings them together with authoritative power for our lives. Now, finally, Jesus has authority because he cares about us. In John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says, 
Greater love has no one in this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And that is what Jesus did. Shortly after he said this in John chapter 15, he laid down his life for us. I think that when you look at all the ways that Jesus has authority within the universe, this might be the greatest authority that he has. Scripture says that love conquers all. In other words, there's no greater conqueror than love. There's no greater authority than love. And there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And Jesus did that not just for you and for me, but for all people throughout the whole world. He cared about us so much that we know that whatever he asks us to do, when he asks us to submit to his authority, whatever he has for us, it's not driven by corrupt power. It's not driven by selfish gain. It's driven by a deep, deep love and care for us, which is why Jesus has the greatest authority, not, over, not only over the whole universe, but over your life and over my life. All right, I hope this helps you to better understand how Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth and in your life. God bless you. We'll see you this Sunday.